This is a quick revision about testicular cancer that is aimed for MOCS candidates. Testicular cancer is corresponding to one of two things, whether it's a germ cell tumor or a stromal cell tumor. Germ cell tumor is quite common and mainly is seminoma, representing up to 50% of germ cell cancer or testicular cancer. You also have teratoma and choriocarcinoma. And yolk sac tumor and embryonal cell tumor. On the other side, stromal cell tumor can either be Sertoli cell tumor, and these are tumor cells that are secreting estrogen or sex hormone, or leading cell tumor, and these are tumor cells that are secreting androgen. And finally, is granulosa cell tumor or makes it time for all of the above. So, what are the risk factors of testicular cancer? It's one of two things family history is on the top, or genetic mutation. Number two will be cryptoorchidism. That will take us to the next question, what is cryptoorchidism? Is partial or complete undescended testis, intra-abdominal testis? It does increase the risk of cancer by threefolds, and it mainly arises from the intralobular germ cell within the atrophic tubules of the testis, usually happen later in life. So if you had a male patient with cryptorchidism, what are you going to do? You need to take history detailed and examine this patient. So obviously history including family history or genetic uh, history, which are the most important. Two, do bloods for this patient. Three, do tumor markers, which are very important. Four, staging of this and can be done by CT cap, all right? And MDT referral, and that will include the urology and oncology. So the scenario continues that we have done all of this for the patient. We've done orchidectomy as well, and it showed that the patient has teratoma, plus positive margins, plus lymphatic invasion. How would you explain this to the family? One, that this is a testicular cancer. Two, this is incomplete resection. Three, with metastasis. So what is the lymphatic metastasis of teratoma? Mostly goes to the para lymph nodes. So this is the common site for lymphatic metastasis. However, teratoma can have hematogenous spread as well. And that can go to the lung or the liver. And how would the patient present if they had lung metastasis? They can come with pleural effusion, hemothorax, or pneumothorax. So if you were asked that this patient developed later on any of those, the way you would explain it, that he had metastasis, metastasis to the lung and you need to do CT chest to rule this out and probably pathology as well. We talked earlier about some of the tumor markers in the testis. We have three different tumor markers in the testis. That includes LDH, alpha fetoprotein, and finally human chorionic gonadotropin. We know that human chorionic gonadotropin for choriocarcinoma, alpha fetoprotein, mainly seminoma, LDH can happen in many different cancers. Um, if this patient developed pulmonary embolism, obviously presented with chest pain, shortness of breath, and fever, and so on. How would you explain it? So probably, one, is this is a hypercoagulable state. And two, most importantly, if you have para-aortic lymph nodes, it might start compressing on the venous or the inferior vena cava, and that will cause venous stasis. So basically, here we're talking about two of the Verkau triad, hypercoagulable states, and venous stasis.